Oh, hey, the music ended. There wasn't any like wind down. It was just like, da, 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 da. <laughs> and it was done. And I was like, I was getting into that. I was getting into it. <laughs> ah, happy Friday, everyone. Happy Friday, Jason. Happy Friday. Oh, look who we got in the studio. Not just one, but two boys are visiting me this, uh, this fine evening. We've got a hairy one and a bald one. I'll let you pick out which one's the dog. That wasn't nice at all. I was waiting for a response. Any response would have done. Hey, friends. Welcome to Friday night. It is officially the weekend, and we're going to kick it off with doing some crafty sewing things. And I'm really excited because I pulled out the Open Gates box for February 2023, and I'm going to work my way through the main project in here, which is FPP. And if you don't know what FPP is, that is foundation paper piecing. And I could, I, I didn't plan this. Monique plans her boxes six to eight months in advance. And I have been working on some FPP projects. If you're paying attention to my vlog, you know I'm putting together the Atomic Starburst pattern from Violet Craft. And I am having a blast doing that. And then I will be moving into a legit kit. I'm going to put together the baby polar bear, which is called Ursula Minor. So this seems really timely. It's almost like the universe is telling me, do more FPP. I didn't plan any of this. It just all fell into my lap. So here we are. <laughs> if you haven't paid attention to my vlog that was uploaded yesterday, a couple of things that I'm going to recap on. Number one, it was Jason's birthday on Monday. Yay, getting old. <laughs> yes, getting old. <laughs> well, <laughs> The alternative is worse. So. <laughs> that is that is true. Um, people are saying I have no sound, but other people are laughing and saying they hear me. So somebody tell Susan in the chat to maybe turn her sound up because I've got sound going out and uh, I don't think it's me. And Lori's saying, yes, there is sound. Shelly's saying, yes, there is sound. And you know what? I actually heard sound from Jason when he started the iPad. So can't fool me, Susan. <laughs> Maybe turn your sound up. Um, I asked everybody, by the way, on, oh, isn't this, yeah, he's hearing it, their sound. <laughs> it was so funny. So yesterday on my vlog, Jason, I told everybody that your birthday was on Monday and I asked them to leave you some birthday wishes in the comments section. And I pulled Jason in here today. I was like, babe, Look how many people love you. And I scrolled through pages of happy birthday. And I think that has guilted him to make a presence on camera. I'm sitting down in this chair. I'm getting up. <laughs> okay, fine. No presence on camera, but you got him on microphone. All right, let's see. What are we going to talk about before we dive in? So I talked about the vlog. Um, I talked about the FPP project that I'm going to be working on. I talked about the project that I'm going to be working on tonight. And I want to make this, I want to jump right into the project. I've got all the cutting done and I'm ready to put this together. So we're going to do that in just a minute. But before we do, a couple of special announcements in case you missed it. I see why I may. Wait, in case you missed it. I see... Why don't am I? I see why am I? I did it. I did it. You can't stop me. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> 
In case you missed it in the vlog yesterday, I am teaching a class for So Yeah Quilting and registration is open right now, but those spaces are limited. So you'll want to make sure that you snag a spot quickly. Even if you think you might go and you're not really sure just yet, grab a registration. And the worst case scenario, if you need to unregister, you can let So Yeah know, you can de-enroll and let somebody else take your spot, but those are limited. If you want to know what I'm going to be teaching, I am going to show you my method for and some of the lessons that I learned for putting together a friendship braid. We're calling it a braid. It's going to be a table runner. Jason, can you hand me that on top of the long arm right there? It's not quilted and bound yet. It's just pieced on the top. If you've been watching me put together my beachy braid quilt, my weekly vlogs, that is what inspired this. And this is what you will make. It is a table runner that measures 17 and a half inches wide by about 55. No, that can't be right. Yeah, I think it is about 55 inches long. You're going to use one fat quarter as an accent and about 20 strips from a jelly roll. You're going to have plenty left over to make this braid a few more times. So if you want to make a table runner for yourself and one for your friend, or you want to make multiple of them and put them into a quilt, whatever works for you, that's what we're going to be working on. So make sure to check out my vlog. And then the description of the vlog will be a link to register for that class. Sign up now. It's a free class. It doesn't cost you anything to join. Doesn't cost you anything to attend. It's a three hour workshop. I'll be teaching how to do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right. So I think that's all the, oh, next week. One more thing next week. Don't cry. But I won't be live. I won't be home. Are you waiting for the tears? No, I'm not. Because I, I know there's none coming from your side of the studio. Um, <laughs> there's tears of joy, maybe. <laughs> so next week, I will be at QuiltCon in Atlanta. I am driving down Wednesday from Northern Virginia. I will be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday morning, mid-morning, maybe. I'll be packing up and heading back up to Northern Virginia, which means Friday night, there will not be a live stream because I will be in a workshop at QuiltCon. So I'm going to enjoy my Friday off. I'm sorry. I had to burp. I don't know why I keep looking at Jason for commentary. Like he's my audience. I don't want to look in the chat or at the lens. I just keep going. <laughs> and he, this is the face I'm getting back. The whole time. Hey, and I'm he, just going to enjoy having the whole bed. <laughs> <laughs> A whole king size bed just for me. <laughs> With covers. Actually, you know, I got to tell you. So. I watched a Kara and Nate video and they went to like the northernmost country in the whole world, like right below the Arctic. Right. And there's actually a town where people live in there. And one of the things that they showed is this couple that has a home, they have a bed and they have one big duvet on top of it. And when you pull it back, there's a duvet on the left side and a duvet on the right side. So his and her blankets underneath a bigger blanket and Kara and Nate were like stunned by this. They're like, oh my gosh, what? I was like, listen, guys, that is the secret to how Jason and I have stayed married. We each have our own blankets. We do have the big down comforter that goes over top of us, but Jason gets a blanket and I get a blanket. And like, I have my quilt. Wait, is a duvet a blanket? I don't know. I don't know. What it, I think a duvet is like a down comforter. Uh, yeah. Why don't you say down comforter? Because... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway. Um, what class am I taking at QuiltCon? Several. And I don't have them off. Of, I don't know which ones are which. I'm taking an embroidery class. I'm taking a pre-quilt class. I'm taking a name, a name tag class. I, I Listen, I don't have the list, but here's what I will tell you. I will be live next week, but I am really excited about QuiltCon and my experience there. So I will be taking little snippets of videos and sharing those on social media, both YouTube and Instagram while I am at QuiltCon. So if you want to experience QuiltCon through my eyes, 
Make sure to subscribe to me on YouTube if you're not already so you see when all those videos hit and follow me on Instagram because I will be sharing content over there too. So make sure to follow me on social media and I'll put all that. And then of course, I'm going to recap everything when I come back because two weeks from tonight, Sean from The Guy Who Sews is going to join me right here on my channel for a live stream. Next week, he is going to the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival, which is where I was going to go until I realized it was the same exact week as QuiltCon. So he's going to join me for a live UFO night where we just sit and sew and chat. He's going to talk about his experience at the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Show and what that was like. I'm going to talk about what QuiltCon was like, and we're just going to have a blast. So make sure to come back in two weeks. Next week, maybe one of my quilty friends would like to take my spot to host a live stream so y'all have some place to go while I'm not here. All right. What do we've got going on? Marie John says, hello, Chewbacca. I told them the story of the Wookiee and how you thought I was never going to let go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah, everybody, everybody was really excited about that. Thank you, Pam Lacey, so much for subscribing. Thank you, Pamela Rabin, for subscribing as well. All right. Um, I still think Zoe's half Wookiee. Oh. <laughs> Wait. <gasps> All right, so let me show you what was in the Open Gates box. Let's just get right into it. I've been talking for seven minutes, and I am sure you guys are more interested in the fabric than you are my silly stories and giggles. Not that those are bad, because we will have plenty of giggles here tonight. Um, I do want to show you first, before I dive into my project, that this fabric, which was designed by Monique Jacobs from Open Gate Quilts, this is her Dust to Dawn fabric. This is a batik. She designed it about this time last year-ish, and I purchased a Fat Quarter Bundle. And if you've been following my vlog, you know I'm using that fabric line for my Atomic Starburst quilt. These are scraps that I used on a live stream on Valentine's Day to make these quilt as you go mug rugs or placemats, whatever you want to call them. I put scrap binding from my beachy braid quilt around all four sides of that. And look, this is now my mouse pad forever and ever. Amen. I absolutely love it. So look at that. All right. What did we get in the open gates box? Well, the first thing that we got was our small project and I have actually already finished it. It is a lanyard that features some twill measurement tape. And so you actually had some fabric and then you had to secure this twill tape to the top of it. And it came with the hardware for the D-ring. I've already got it put together and I'm really excited about this. The timing on it could not be better because my lanyard kind of went and crapped out on me. So I needed a new one, but I was... Uh, I was going to make one and I just didn't. So now I have this one and I think that'll be a lot of fun to wear my work badge on and maybe even get some use out of while I'm at QuiltCon. The next thing that we got was a small spool of Aurifil thread. This is color number 6722, which by the way, is the color that I use for all of my piecing, unless I need something that's dark, which in that case I use 2625. So this is, Definitely going to go in my collection of 6722 spools in on my thread rack. We got a bonus fat quarter. This is what mine looks like. I think everybody's is the same. I don't exactly know how that works, but I'll open it up and you guys can see. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. This is nice. And I think it is from, I think it's from that new collection by My Mind's Eye because it seems to coordinate quite nicely with the border fabric in our main project. For an additional fee, you can get a fat quarter stash buster in your box. And Monique is kind enough to toss one of these into my boxes so I can show you guys what the fat quarter stash buster looks like if you were to have elected it. I've got a piece of paper that gives me a pattern that she has written. This is what it will look like. Obviously, you don't have enough fabric in this little bundle to make the entire project, but you might be able to make a block or two, and then you can add more fabrics that coordinate with this if you want to turn it into the full quilt. And then you get four fat quarters that all coordinate and work well together. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up so you can see each of these fat quarters. This first one is, it definitely feels like Civil War. Ah, that would be why. Blue Hill Fabrics is the designer. Sarah Morgan for Blue Hill Fabrics. And I'm looking to see if there is a fabric line. Nope. Okay. I'm just going to flip through the fat quarters. And I'll take peeks at salvages. 
as I'm doing this so I can see if it stands out. It's probably in the documentation. Wyndham Fabrics. Nope, nothing there. I like this one. I actually feel like I've had this in my room before. It's kind of a cream with that maroon dot. Maywood Studio. It's a basic. Okay, whatever it is, I think they all work nicely together. So those are our four fat quarters. And then, and then we got, because I already told you we're going to be doing FPP, we got an add a quarter ruler. And I'm going to put this in my giveaway box. And my giveaway box is getting filled up. So we're going to have to do some giveaways soon. We'll probably do that when I come back from QuiltCon because I don't want that hanging over my head before I leave to go out of town. The reason why I'm going to give this away is because my preferred rulers of choice are these two. I actually don't have the longer add a quarter plus one. I just have the small six inch one. And then I have the nine inch add an eighth ruler. So if you don't know what an add a quarter or an add an eighth ruler is, is they're essentially the same thing except this one leaves an eighth of an inch seam allowance and this leaves a quarter of an inch seam allowance. The difference between the add a quarter and the add a quarter plus is just this little edge. The add a quarter plus has a tapered edge right here that allows you to use this to better crease your fabric. I prefer using the add a quarter plus but they all both do the exact same thing. So I'm going to put this in my giveaway box to give away. And I'm going to keep these here because those are my tools of the trade. I'm going to clean up my desk a little bit and I'm going to show you what the project we're going to make is. We have a design choice. We get to choose what we're going to make and I'm going to show you which one I'm going to do. And spoiler alert, I know Tiffany does these projects and she does a time lapse of, so when she gets the open gates box, she does a unboxing and makes a project in time lapse mode and I don't know if she posted her video yet. I haven't seen it. So I don't know which one she chose. It's going to be funny if we ended up choosing the same one. We're going to make either this log cabin wall hanging or this. They're calling this the double date pattern. I'm going to choose to make this one, although it's going to have this as the border. So this is what I'm going to have in the center, and it's going to have this as the border. I'm really excited about making this. To make that, we've got a packet of papers. Oh, Monique is in the chat. Hello. She said that the Fat Quarter Bundle is just a variety of fabrics. Awesome. Well, they all blend together quite nicely. Inside the little bundle of instructions, you're going to obviously have your your picture and this came actually in the fabric pack but I put it down here so I knew what everything was. Here are your instructions for your FPP project which I can tell you all the cutting instructions for this one because this is not what makes the project. The paper templates are what makes the project. So I'm going to be demonstrating FPP live on my channel tonight. So if you have questions, we actually have people in the chat that are well versed with FPP and would love to answer your questions. So if there's something that you want to know, toss it in the chat. And if you want to see an in-depth, concise tutorial video, my friend Ian from Off Kilter Crafter Ian has an excellent tutorial on FPP. And by the way, he is just a stone's throw away from 12,000 subscribers. And he would love it if you use that little code, exclamation Ian, hopped over to his channel, see what his videos are about. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Let's see if we can push him to 12,000 by the end of the weekend. The next thing that we have are our sets of FPP paper. So Monique has taken it upon herself in our package to give us the templates already printed on FPP paper. This is regular FPP paper. This is not freezer paper. And this is a uh, thin kind of like newsprint. I don't know if it is newsprint, but the idea here is that your needle goes through it really nicely. It's it's thick enough that it holds your pieces together, but thin enough that you can pull it off and tear it away really easily. You're going to need four pieces for our project, so you can choose either the log cabin or the double date. I'm going to do the double date, so I need these. Now, I will tell you, I cheated a little bit because I thought these were absolutely beautiful. So what I did is I copied... Uh-oh. Where did it go? Hey, babe. Yeah. Never mind, I found it. 
paper is so thin it's stuck together. I copied each of these templates onto a piece of regular copy paper. That way I can put it all back together in my little file. As most of you know, if you've seen my studio tour, I keep all of my FPPs in a binder in a sheet protector so when i want to do more fpp i can just get that template and copy it off so since she gave us those templates as part of our box i figured i could make one copy and use that as my original to keep copying this if i want to make the block again so let's get to it we're going to make this block four times and then we're going to put those four blocks together so i'm going to set this over here and I'll leave this here because somebody's inevitably going to say, what are you working on? That, that's what I'm working on. <laughs> All right, so I will tell you the trick that I know I'm going to do right off of the bat. I'm going to look at this block and I can see, it's gonna be a little hard for you to see it on camera unless you blow this up. I can see that the point that comes into the middle right here is gonna be black and then the outsides is white. So when I'm working through this, I'm going to grab a pen and I'm just going to put a letter B wherever there's black fabric just so I don't have to think about it. Anywhere where the letter B is not at is where I'm going to secure white fabric. For me, I happen to know that it's wherever the even numbers are. If you look at this, you can you can see that there are two pieces on this because your block is gonna be made of two pieces that you're going to secure together. So I'm going to go ahead and just roughly cut this right down the middle. I'm not trimming this up. I'm gonna wait until I have put this all together to trim everything up because this is just time that I would waste doing it right now. So I'm gonna start by grabbing, I'm gonna start with piece number one, which I know is gonna be my white fabric. That's gonna be my longest white fabric. I'm going to lay it, since it's a solid, it doesn't matter, but normally you're gonna lay it wrong side Wait, other side. <laughs> you're gonna lay it wrong side of the fabric to the wrong side of the paper. And you're just gonna make sure that that covers all of section one. And then, this is what I do. I'm gonna grab my add a eighth ruler. I'm going to put the ledge on that line that goes between number one and number two. I'm gonna pull the paper up. This is very flimsy. It doesn't want to listen to me. Are you going to do anything next Friday, Jay? Uh, don't have any plans right at the moment. At the moment. Okay, so once I have that paper folded on that line, I'm going to come in with my add an eighth ruler and I like to trim the paper away at this point. This is starting to create my seam allowance. I use the add an eighth ruler when I'm piecing smaller blocks. Neither one is the right answer. You can use either one. And then if you wanted to pop a pin between the paper and the fabric, just to kind of keep things tidy and keep it from flipping around, you can do that. If you want to, you can also use a little dab of glue, whatever works for you. Then you're gonna grab your black fabric, and this is where you start putting it right sides together. So because I cleaned up that edge on my fabric, the, I, don't, I can't do the pins with FPP, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, I just can't. Some people do, and it works for them. It just absolutely confounds me and confuses me, and it causes bubbles, so we're just gonna stay true to my method. Because I trimmed that, now all I have to do is line up my next piece of fabric with the edge that I just cut. And I'm gonna hold it with my fingers, take it to my machine. I'm gonna change my stitch length down to 1.2 or so. And that's just gonna make my stitches a lot tighter, which is gonna make it easier to rip this all off later. I'm gonna stitch on the line directly between section one and section two. And then, hmm, this shifted a bit over, but it's still within all of the parameters. So I normally wouldn't have to do this, but because I readjusted all the fabric after 
I lined things up. I have more bulk in the seam allowance than I would care to have, so I'm just gonna clean that up. Then I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna roll back that black fabric. I'm gonna press it down with my finger. And then I'm gonna iron it into place. When I'm doing FPP, I know it's a lot of work to stop and iron along the way, but I feel like if I can get my fabrics to lay nice and flat from that hot iron, it's gonna make my life a lot easier when I'm putting this together. Let me put that up there. All right, now I'm just gonna rinse and repeat. So now I'm going to attach the fabric to section three, which means I'm concerned about the line that's going between two and three. So I'm gonna grab my ruler, that tapered edge, crease along the line between two and three, fold it back, trim the fabric so I have a nice clean edge to line up to. And now I'm going to grab a white fabric because that's an odd number. Flip it over, line up my white fabric along that edge, take this to the machine, and stitch on the line between two and three. Now I will tell you Monique gave us cutting instructions so that we don't have to measure our fabric for all of these little wedges that we're filling in. And that is honestly such a wonderful idea. Linda Denton says, hi everyone. Oh, hold on, where, where did it go? Ian texted it to me so I could see it. Hmm. Linda Denton says, Hi everyone, seems like a lot of FPP been going on with different channels and I wanna try some one day. It does seem that way, right? And I promise you that's not planned. That was not planned at all. Hmm. That stitch length is just a little too tight for my liking and it's almost right on the edge, but I know this is not a quilt that's gonna get a lot of abuse. It's gonna hang on a wall, so we're gonna leave it, it'll be okay. It's not right on the edge, but if this was a quilt, the stitching is close enough to the edge that if this was going into a quilt that I was going to use, I probably would rip that out and redo it. But it's not. It's going to be a piece of art. Welcome to the weekend. And Patty said, sorry, I had to leave to go and subscribe to Ian's page. Hey, that is an acceptable reason to leave the live stream. Right, Jay? Sounds good to me. <laughs> You have no plans for next Friday yet, huh? Not yet. Hmm. Thought you talked about maybe getting Dominic over here. Well, I'm sure that's always a possibility. <laughs> you never know when Dominic's going to show up, right? I'm going to start using the add a eight. I'm just going to lay in there. I thought I was going to use the add a quarter, but I may stick with the add an eighth. Open Gates, the name Open Gates in the chat is Monique. She's the one that curated these projects and wrote the pattern. She does have three boxes available, this exact project. It is first come, first serve. So if you want this exact kit, do I think exclamation open gate in the chat and it'll take you over to her website and you can grab that box. Ah, Katrina says, I love it when the measurements for cutting are provided. It makes it less stressful. I agree. Maya just subscribed to both Ian and Sean. Uh, Mary says, maybe a Monopoly night for Dominic and Jason. <laughs> <laughs> or Castle Panic. Castle Panic. I did buy him Castle Panic for his birthday. The big box set. He's really excited about that. Hasn't had a chance to play it yet. I think you could play that with two people. You can play with one. Oh, oh yeah, you could, couldn't you? Yeah, no, it's, it's yes, single player. Are you going to play by yourself? That would be a very lonely, that would be sad. Hey, babe, I'm back from Atlanta. I went to QuiltCon. I saw amazing quilts. I spent some money. I am just beyond excited. I had a wonderful time. What did you do? Played I played myself. a... That, you knew that's where that was going. No, right? Actually, I didn't. Come on. 
song. <laughs> I played board games all by myself. <laughs> oh, you know what I did? I'm such a do a dingleberry. I should be using the smaller pieces as I go, and I didn't do that. So this might end up coming back to bite me in the katukas later, but we'll see what happens. Okay, hold on. This one, yes, that's right. So she gave us, I was like, man, these are getting to be really big pieces. <laughs> I've got a lot more waste off of this one. Um, she gave us measurements that narrow, uh, slowly got smaller and smaller so that you weren't using the same size piece for each wedge. But I was just pulling off of the top instead of pulling the next size down because that's what I do. There we go. Yeah, that'll work. Barbara King says, I tried paper piecing once, almost pulled out all of my hair after watching Ian and now you. I may try it again. I need that ruler. Definitely go watch Ian's tutorial before you start again just to get yourself a nice refresher. That's what I need. Green, green grass, blue, blue sky. Oh man, that's a silly you know those tiktoks do you know the song and the tiktoks that are going around right now green green grass blue blue sky you know what i'm talking about have you seen any of those no i haven't even seen oh. this blue man the stuff that shows up on my instagram feed and your instagram feed must be vastly different i uh, don't look at instagram facebook youtube tiktok they're all the same No, nothing. Fine. Well, I don't know if they're all the same. I no, I was asking you, do you watch those? Uh, yeah. Facebook and... I stick to Facebook and YouTube. All right. Bloop, bloop, bloop. I'm watching the clock. I have Charisma Horton Trunk to go to this evening. Awesome. That sounds like fun. A trunk show. Have fun with that, Susan. Pat says, I use George Cicillano's Cicil ruler system for FPP. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I've got one more piece to put on this section. Now these little bits I'm gonna save um, because I can probably use those since I used pieces that were too, I used pieces that were too big for this. I can probably use those if I need to make a piece grow magically on one of the last blocks that I do. So we're gonna hold on to them. I can show you on Sunday Zoom, Becca. Sounds great. That red fabric, though, Jane said. Jane's watching the unboxing of the fat quarters, maybe. Either that or she likes my ironing board. All right, now that I have this all pieced together, we're going to make magic. We're going to take my little one and a half inch by six and a half inch ruler. And I'm going to clean this up. There are two lines on this. There's one that's touching all the pieces and then another line going around the perimeter of the block that is a quarter inch away from that first line. The line that is going around the outside is the one that you want to square up to or trim up to. The one on the inside marks where you're gonna sew when you join this up with your other blocks. I like my favorite part of FPP, honestly, is once you've made a mess securing all of your fabrics to the back side of your paper and then you clean it up and you get something that looks like that. 
Look how nice and tight. Oh, that's just gorgeous. So there we go. I'm going to scrape these into the trash because I can't use that again. We're going to need that trash can again, so we'll leave it close. Now we're going to do that seven more times. But before I do, I'm going to do one thing this time just to make this a little bit easier. I'm going to rough cut this away so I can see the sections better. Anne Marie says, Becca, do you have a tutorial on your ironing board? No, I don't because I didn't make this ironing board. I bought it, um, but it was recovered. My friend Mary recovered it for me, and we have been talking about making some boards. So uh, once I once I do, if I do that, maybe that's something we could do a video tutorial on. It might be a while though, because I don't really have a need for another one. That one's working just fine right now. I'm not precisely cutting. I'm just rough cutting with my rotary cutter these pieces so that they're a little bit shaped better so that I can make sure I'm grabbing fabrics more appropriately. Hey, Susan. If you guys don't know, Susan's got a YouTube channel too. All of my moderators that are here, I know several of you are trying to start YouTube channels and share your passion and your quilting with the world. I am more than happy to let everybody promote themselves, but at least right now, and I'm thinking I'm going to change this, but for right now, unless you're a moderator on the channel, you can't actually share a link. Uh, but I think I've got a solution for that that'll come in the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, if you have a YouTube channel that you would like people to check out, you can just politely raise your hand and ask one of the moderators to drop your channel link. They can easily get your channel link and post it in the chat. And I am sure whoever is here whose name is in blue right now would be more than happy to help you with that. So now is the chance to promote your channel. Do it. Raise your hand if you have a channel you want people to check out. All right, Monique, I can't wait to see what this looks like. I'm ready to go. You want to see one quarter of my block? One quarter of one, it's one four, it's one half of one of the four blocks. So it's one eighth of the project. Yeah? No, Jason's not impressed. <laughs> Julie says, I get scared that Becca is violating the prohibition <laughs> to cut paper with your fabric scissors when she uses her rotary cutter for paper. LOL. I use my rotary cutter to cut through paper all the time. And I don't have a problem. Do I dull my blade sooner? Probably, but rotary blades are supposed to be replaced. I don't want to use my fabric scissors for it, but I don't have a problem using my rotary cutter for it because I have to replace the blade anyway. Hey, Kayla. She said, just came over to YouTube from TikTok. Freaking love the online quilting community. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to move on to the next piece. We're going to start with fabric number one. I'm going to grab one of these long, long pieces. And I'm going to grab one of these long, long pieces. I'm going to grab my add an eighth. Crease it between section one and two. Hey, there's Nicole, my sister. Everybody say hi to Nicole. Jason, you want to say hi to Harvey? He's probably watching with her. Harvey! <laughs> I can imagine him running over to the iPad now. And pointing like he does. <laughs> all right. Line all that up. Tram it all up. And there goes the chat. <laughs> hi, Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Nicole. <laughs> Can 
green, green grass, blue, blue sky. Come on, somebody else knows the shorts that I'm talking about. Please tell me I'm not the only one that's getting served this stuff up. Leah says, first time here. Nice to meet everyone. Hello. Ba -da -ba -ba. Oops, oops, get back on that line. Get back on the line. I am just starting to get the hang of FPP, Janine says. I think my mic is way too hot. Let me turn it down a little bit. There we go. I keep seeing it go into the yellow, and I'm like, ah, probably blowing someone's eardrums out. Nicole said, hey, guys, he's with his daddy, and we're, Parker and I, are taking a break. Lori says, I would like to do this one in blues. I bet that would be gorgeous. Katie says, I don't do the TikTok and my Instagram gets very little stuff on it since I have it set to not have a bunch of garbage coming across it. Okay, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just take the sound and <laughs> repost on Instagram. Green, green sky. Right, right there. That is what I am doing. There, because somebody's going to ask, what are you making? That. All right. Now we need the second size down, which is this one. Let's use the appropriate sizes this time, people. There we go. Get lined up. I didn't make a Valentine's Day quilt, Julie says, but I received a calencho plant and named it Valentina. She sits near the sewing machine now in front of a window and looks happy. What is that type of plant? What does that look like? Leah says, I love paper piecing and I would do this in purples. Marie says, if I get through my legit kit butterfly, I'm going to try the New York beauty. Oh my goodness. Way to set those goals for yourself. I can't wait to get my, did you see the legit kit that I'm going to do? Mm. Oh, you guys. This is the next, this is on my list to start in March. Oh, the polar bear? Oh, yeah. yeah okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, I've seen the, I've seen the. This is the legit kit that I'm going to do. I have, I have visions of matchstick quilting that thing because it's not going to be very big. It's going to be a wall hanging. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be gorgeous. Matchstick quilting is when you do just straight lines close together. <clears throat> so it would just be like, I don't know how else to quilt it. Actually, you probably would come up with some really neat ideas to quilt it. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to quilt it. But I might ask you for some ideas. No? Okay. One, two. Tell me a story, Jason. What happened this week at work? Anything fun? Uh, work from home, so... I sit in the office, uh, and that's the end of that story. <laughs> no funny water cooler stories. What water cooler? It's our kitchen. <laughs> Katie wants to make a New York beauty, too. Yep, that's good. Okay. 
What's a New York beauty? I don't, I'm... A New York beauty is essentially lots of really sharp angles, kind of like what you see with this piece here, but they're kind of done in a circle. I don't know much else about them, but it is a type of quilt that you can make with FPP with a lot of really sharp points. If you Google New York beauty, you'll see it come up. I'll get right on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you will. Oh, Ian, thank you for putting that link in the chat. Let me remind everybody again, I will be teaching how to make a braid table runner over a Zoom class for So Yeah on Saturday, March 18th, 2021 from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. Spaces are limited. You do need to register for that class if you are thinking about attending. So make sure to hop over there, sign up for the class, get registered, and we'll sew together over Zoom on Saturday, March 18th. It is a free class. Nobody needs to pay for that. You just need to register to, to go. Oh boy, EPP. Glad I tuned in. Jamie, this is an EPP. This is FPP, girl. EPP is hand piecing, and that is a four letter word in my world. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. Eleven, twelve. I feel like I have nothing to talk about. I'm just sitting over here folding fabric, sewing on paper, folding fabric, sewing on paper. What what should we talk about? Let's tell a story. Let's see if people have questions. Let's do some Q&A. Ask some questions. And maybe Jason can read them out and we can answer them. I guess I can try. You can try to read? Yeah. <laughs> I wasted all my reading on your singers. <laughs> do you want to... You want to get it and read that to them? It was riveting. It was riveting. <laughs> I bought a singer sewing book. It does not have the excerpt that I put in my short, but it does have some words of wisdom that will just question the wisdom piece. <laughs> Do not feel overwhelmed. You are about to embark on a sewing adventure. <laughs> Let's talk sister wives. Oh, Jamie wants to talk about sister wives. Hi, Jason. You want to talk about the sister wives? Sure. I think all their business, well, all their business is out. All their business is out there, man. They're like, they're, well, they're basically frauds. Oh. <laughs> I mean, from the get go, they they were not they were not they were not a good example of a pol polygamous family. <laughs> now, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm for polygamy. I, I'm not against it, but I mean, he said they're frauds. Okay, next. <laughs> well, I mean, they were having troubles before they even started the show. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, they had good personalities for it. I mean, compared to other some of the other polygamous families, that they like they had good personalities to carry a show, but they had underlying issues before the show, before they added a new wife. Hmm. Like yeah, Hi, puppy. That, that, it, it just it, it was just that whole show was it made me feel like, like at the end, I was just like, it was a waste of time me watching any of the episodes. <laughs> 17 because, season. Yeah, because it was just, it was just all crap. I feel let down. I know. Like, there was just, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, you know, it's real life. There's not going to be a happy ending, usually. I mean. Well, but... Christine seems pretty happy. She's sporting around town her new man. 
Yeah, she went. Well, she no, they're no longer polygamous. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. <laughs> it's like it's like she won the survivor of polygamy. <laughs> That is she horrible. Got, she she got the uh, torch and she went to monogamy. She's like, peace, I'm out. Now she's dating a new guy, it looks like, that uh, owns his own business and he's a widower or a widow. Widower. I think that's that's the term when your wife dies, right? Yeah. But as far as that show goes, I mean, it was it was okay, entertaining. We got to see their old houses when we went to Vegas. <laughs> we did, we did. We went to so yeah. Or at least see their neighborhood anyway. We didn't really. See yeah, we did. Couldn't they had a gate? Um, but we went to so yeah, their old location, and then we drove. Uh, we drove past. We found, we looked up online where their houses were. It was like a five or 10 minute drive from their old store. And we were like, we gotta go. And so we drove over to the neighborhood. It was, it was different than what I expected because I think I expected it to be in this really nice neighborhood with lots of new houses. And it was kind of like this area that was un, it felt undeveloped. And well, then in the middle of it, the self is undeveloped. Well, like but this. it was like this area where there wasn't a whole lot. And then in the middle of it, there was like six really big, beautiful houses behind a gate. And that was it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was like, this is deceiving. This is not what you thought it was. Like you thought they were driving through a subdivision. Nope. They turned off of a main road into a cul-de-sac. <laughs> I would say I was more impressed when we went to New York and got to see the, uh, places where the movies were made oh yeah of course you know i'm i'm a sex in the city buff right there like right i like my sex in the city he does my you've got mail i've only seen that movie three thousand times i think you're underestimating the amount of times we've seen that movie you're probably right dreams are just a bit of ba -ba -ba. dreams are push them true wish i for you wah, 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 wah. get out of there we, for our 10 year anniversary, went to New York City and we did some research before we went and listed out. We got like all the details for all the places where they recorded some scenes in the movie. And um, we did a You've Got Mail well, tour. Too. Huh? There's plaques there. Like they'll have yeah. plaques. And yeah. Stuff where this was shot here. This was. Uh, th this was the shop around the corner. This was, yep. This is, yeah. So they got plaques too. You can just wander around. Oh, this is really shot that. <laughs> Look at the dog. Yeah. You, you bored the dog. <laughs> Congratulations. The dog is bored. <laughs> you bored the dog. <laughs> Congratulations. You bored the dog. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leah, for subscribing. Uh, Margo says, question, do you change your needle more often with paper piecing? Also, do you use a separate rotary cutter? Nope, I sure don't. Nope, nope, nope. But I will say, I don't FPP so much that, li like, FPP is not my norm. It's not my main project. It's a, I'll do it once in a while. I don't find that I need to replace my rotary cutter or needle any more frequently. <laughs> my pup just crashed. I can sew now. <laughs> that was Lori Clark. I am ripping out the paper that would be in the seam on this block, and then I'm going to press the seam open, and then I'll have my first of four blocks done. I've just got to do this three more times. Yeah, it was essentially a production site. I saw somebody say that it was essentially a production set, but there were things in the city that were referenced or like the outside of the building was taken, a, a clip of the outside of the building was taken. And then they, of course, recorded the movie in a production set. But like there was actually a place. It's actually a now or when we went, it was um dry cleaner, right? Yeah, yeah. And then they had that one scene where the, it's like 
the two streets come to a point. Yeah. And stuff, so they got that marked. That's a that's a legit place. That was you know. It wasn't like, it wasn't like everybody does Washington where they, movies change Washington to make it look different than it actually is. He actually went and laid in his bed. Hmm? He must have done something bad out there in the living room. Yeah, he probably pooped in your office. Probably. <laughs> Oh, my reference to production set was in reference to Sister Wives. Gotcha. All right, so now that I've made one block, I'm going to streamline this a little bit. What I'm going to do is stack up everything that I need to make each section. Just so I don't have to think about it, I'm going to grab a section of paper and I'm going to pile my fabrics on to the paper with the first, the last one on the bottom and the first one on the top. So I'm going to start with number seven and then I'm going to grab number six, then I'm going to grab number five, and then number four, and then number three, and then number two, and then number one. And then I'll do that again for all six of these pieces. That way everything's filed and ready for me to do this. One, two, three, Four. This is the part of the live stream where I just count. <laughs> Five. <laughs> it was funny in my head. <laughs> Six. Okay. Oh, that right. Mm -hmm. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, one, two, three, four. Wait, I messed this one up. One, two, mm -hmm, that's what I did wrong. Three, four, five. Six, seven. Okay. And then we'll do this one again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I've got one more that I've got to do. <laughs> I'm gonna say it like the count from Sesame Street, Kristen says. One, four pieces of fabric. I'm going to put scraps there in that place because I missed it. I do have extra of the black that I can go grab if I need to, but we're going to see if we can make it work with this later. So I'm just going to put all these scraps right here. So one, just going to put a couple, just, just a couple, just a couple. One, two, ah, 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 three, four. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wait, What's that? it's not the big one. It's not the big one. It's not the big one. That's what she said. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it this way. Okay, there we go. We're going to recover for... Oh, hey. Hey. Okay. What am I missing? I'm missing... Oh, I know what I did wrong. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. One. Two. This is where I have to figure out what I did wrong. Three. Four. Five. Six. <laughs> seven <laughs> and scraps we'll save this one till later when I'm able to fully focus on it but I'm going to have to grow some of these pieces because I got too zealous in my cutting and what I mean by growing my pieces I'll show you really quick so this for example if I'm trying to make fabric to cover a section all I'm going to do is take a seam I'm just going to it doesn't matter where it's at I'm just going to take a seam well, I got to add it to the side that I want it to grow on. Um, I'm going to take a seam 
all the way through and then I'll bring it over and I'm going to press that seam open because that's going to let it lay a bit flatter, just like that. And now I've got a bigger piece of fabric. It does have a seam in it. So you will see this in your project, but when you step back and look at it, I mean, you're going to have seams in your project anyway. So nobody's going to be looking if they shouldn't anyway. I mean, you'll notice it, but um, that's how you can make up for it. If you accidentally cut your fabric too small and you need to grow it to make it work for your piece. So I will have to make some of these pieces grow. I'm going to set those aside and I will work on them later. I'm not going to get through all of these on this live stream, but I am going to work on as many as I can get. So now that I've got my little filing system ready, I'm just going to come over here and sew. And because I set these up in the pile that I in the pile order that I needed, all I got to do is pick up one of them. And then when I flip my fabrics, when I set my fabrics over here, the first fabric that I need is right on top. So I can grab that and get to work. So I was talking to some friends earlier, Jay, about quilt con. Um, Okay. This year is in Atlanta, as you know. Next year is in Raleigh, and it is probably, I think it's like the same thing where it's Thursday through su uh, Sunday. Mm -hmm. If I were to go next year to QuiltCon in Raleigh, which is like three hours from here, and we left on Saturday night instead, or early Sunday morning, either way would work, if I got somebody to watch Zoe like maybe my parents, would you go to QuiltCon in Raleigh with me? And then we could stop and get Justice in Richmond on the way home? Uh, you have a year to think about it. I would consider that, I guess. You have a whole year to think about that, but I was thinking that would be kind of cool. Or you mean you have a whole year to guilt me into doing it? Is that what you really meant by that? I didn't say that, babe. How dare you think that I would guilt you into going to QuiltCon with me? Yeah, why would I ever get that kind of idea? <laughs> I think Ian is going to be at QuiltCon in Raleigh 2024. Donna will be there. Sean from the guy who sews, I think, I find it. Like, there's a ton of people going. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, and uh, you too, maybe. Somebody left a comment on the vlog on Tuesday or Thursday that I thought was hilarious. They were like, happy birthday, Mr. Sobeka. And I got, I thought that was the best comment ever. Can I get you a shirt? If you go to QuiltCon, can I get you a shirt that says Mr. Sobeka? No? No. Can I get you a shirt that says Property of Becca? No. No? Okay. Well, we'll have to think of something fun. Do you really want a brown skin guy? <laughs> Okay, that was really important. I didn't even think, I didn't think of that. <laughs> hey, this brown guy is the property of this white woman. I did not even go there. <sighs> that is horrible, and I apologize sincerely. That is not where my mind went. You're right. That is not a good idea. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody said we can make we could get you a shirt that says Becca's babe. Can I do that? No. Becca's... I mean, you can get the shirt. I ain't gonna wear it. <laughs> you can get whatever you want. You can get whatever you want. Whether or not it'll be on me is a different story. <laughs> Uh, Joanna says, I noticed that you use magic sewing pins. What do you like about them? I asked a lady today and she said that she hated them. Nothing special. Don't bother. 
I love the grip. I feel like I can hold them. They don't slide around and the grip is pretty comfortable. The grip is heat resistant. It is not heat proof. So you can leave them in while you're ironing if you wanted to, but just don't do it if your iron is on a high setting. Um, I, I like that they're extra fine and they slide in to my fabric really nicely. But I will say, um, you can get any pin in that size and it'll work the same way. I wouldn't say not to bother. I think they're great pins. I like the ones that have the blue tip or the pink tip. How about Super Husband with a... Are you reading through the chat on your own? No. Oh, okay. He's playing games on his phone. <laughs> I'll read the chat to you. You're welcome. People... You lost, you lost me as soon as you started trying to dress me. Okay, I'll stop trying to dress you. I'll, I'll undress you. You're welcome. Is that a promise? Or... Or... Oh, God. <laughs> uh, pet, pet put Becca's bodyguard. I can walk around with a little earpiece. <laughs> like the Secret Service? Yeah. <laughs> Director of Security. <laughs> she said. Uh, security. Security! Security! security. If you can cannot... just clear this aisle, please. We can clear this. <laughs> can clear this aisle, please. I need to keep this lane, this lane clear. Thank you, you. Have you seen? There's a. I don't remember who did it. I, I want to say Doodad, but I no, I don't think that's right. Um, there was a channel that did this whole thing with like a, a two year old or like a a, a toddler oh. that had just started walking and the dad and his friend dressed up as like secret service in the black suit with like the earpiece and they were following the child around and every time somebody got close they were like no photographs no autographs excuse me keep it clear no no pictures <laughs> they were just like what <laughs> it was hilarious <laughs> Ma'am, we're going to need you to step back. <laughs> and nobody was even interested in the kid. And they were just like, you need to step back, ma'am. <laughs> How about Becca's G-O-T, G-O-A-T, Becca's goat? I don't, I don't, the greatest of all time. Is that, that's what goat means, yeah, right? The goat. Goat, Becca's goat. We should put that, that should be a label on every quilt that I make because it'll be just like the Apple iPhone, right? Every time I make a quilt, it's the best quilt I have ever made. Just like every time Apple releases a new phone, they're like, it's the fastest iPhone ever. Is that like the best cup, cup of coffee? <laughs> World's <laughs> best <laughs> cup of coffee! Congratulations! <laughs> you did it! <laughs> world's greatest pizza have you ever been to a pizza contest <laughs> name one pizza contest <laughs> so Becca emotional support companion <laughs> well she can pet me later I guess <laughs> <laughs> If I rub your head, do I get a wish? <laughs> Is that what, like, Mr. Clean? <laughs> oh, well, don't... if you if you go lower, I'll get my <laughs> wish. <laughs> wow. Wow, that just went there. All right. And this video has been demonetized. Thank you. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Uh, somebody out there just spit their drink all over their shirt. Their project's got a coffee stain in the middle of it. You never know what's going to be said when Jason joins the chat. <laughs> it's not a clock. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> Mary said, this combo's getting a little racy. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody else is laughing. <laughs> Including Mary, probably. <laughs> I can't picture Mary not laughing, to be honest with you. <laughs> 
SL Prasad Kim Deal calls her husband the CEO. It stands for cares, carries everything out. <laughs> 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 Julie said, I will never look at paper piecing the same way again. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I'm here every Friday, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> try the veal. <laughs> try, try the veal. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll make a bunt. <laughs> mm -hmm. He don't eat meat. He's a vegetarian. What do you mean he eat no meat? I make a lamb. I make lamb. I make a lamb. <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah, that was a good one too. <sighs> I've seen that one over a half a dozen times. Mm -hmm. sure. It's great. The second one wasn't as good as the first one, though. Oh, that's that's the way it usually is. So. Yeah, there's a couple of times though that the sequel's good, or good in its own right. Well, I mean, or good for different reasons. It's hard to get. Especially when you're not, when the movie it's the first, the original movie wasn't like it was like what on a shoestring budget like they made the mo whole movie for like a few million dollars and then yeah. they end up making like hundreds of millions of dollars like to try to to try to do that with a two is that's just that's a long shot. It was a it, it was a good movie. It it was it <laughs> the whole thing like there wasn't anything about that movie that I I, I love. Put some Windex on it, like yeah, uh, yeah that the whole movie. <sighs> I love that movie. But the worst, the worst, the worst second. The... There's a motorcycle, and my my eight pound dog is going to protect the house from the motorcycle that's a mile away. They that dog's been trimmed down a good bit. It's probably like four and a half pounds. <laughs> No, because Mary's puppies are about four and a half pounds. He's twice their size. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. You are so ferocious. <laughs> well, I was just saying, the worst second movie that I can think of is Sex and the City 2. Why? It's horrible. Why was it horrible? It was just horrible. It was bad. The first movie was good. I like the first movie. I could watch that was that put that on. I put it on my rewatchable list. But the second movie was just bad. It was just all sorts of bad. No, the so it, that one's up there with the intern for you. What all the so, the, the Sex and the City the first, first one? In, the first Sex and the City, yeah, yeah. the intern, yeah, that the, I can watch the I can watch the intern anytime. Robert De Niro. Oh yeah, you watch Robert De Niro anytime. And Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway. Like, great movie. Like, great fun for all ages. Ten out of ten. Would highly recommend. It just it just, it just tells a good story. It's a good it does. story. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I think What's, he does it in every single one yeah. of his movies. What's so funny is to watch the intern where he plays that like the straight character like that, and then you walk, go watch watch him in like Dirty Grandpa or whatever. Oh, yes, then it's just hilarious. Like you can't you can't picture it. You just it's you can't picture him changing that much. Yeah, Dirty Grandpa was not not a not on my list of rewatch. No, I I couldn't rewatch that movie either, but. <laughs> Tell you what, I could rewatch a hundred times though, because it's funny as heck. Um, Central Intelligence with oh, Kevin yeah, Hart yeah, and The yeah. Rock. Yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. It's funny. I don't know if I could put that on my rewatch list. I put it on my rewatch list. I laugh. I, although there's parts of that movie where you're, it's cringe. You're like, okay, this this isn't funny. This this is cringe. Yeah, I agree. It's, I agree. Sherry is here. She said, sorry I'm late. I went to a friend's birthday. Awesome. Ian said, he's going to save you from the scary rubble noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he thinks that. But he would be wrong. I'm going to try something right quick. Don't do it. Oh, I'm going to do it. Don't do it. Oh, don't do it. They'll never know. How will they know? They'll never know. Screw up production. Oh, I'm going to screw it all up. It's going to be great. It's gonna be wonderful. 
Wonder Bar. What the Aw. Uh, green, green grass. Blue, blue. No. Still, still nothing? Nope. All right. Sounds good. There we go. And then, and then, no, and then. What about that movie? What? That, what was that? Um, Dude, where's my car? Yeah. What was... That's a good, movie. that's a good, that's, it, that movie's okay. It's not, I don't, it's too, it's not rewatchable. I, have, I haven't gone back to watch that movie again. There's some movies that just can't, that you just don't, you only watch once and you, and you, you just push it aside. You're like, okay, it was a good movie. It's done. I've had that experience. I don't know if we like this. We'll see. Um, but I, since i kind of shown the project, I just switched it. So the inset right there is the actual project. Let me know if you like this view. If you don't, we'll go back to the other one. But I thought, why not? <laughs> Bobblehead. <laughs> I know you're not much on westerns, but Open Range, Kevin Costner, Robert Duvall, that's a good one. I don't know. I know you've probably never seen it, but that's a good rewatchable one. Nope. Never seen it. Never seen it. That's sad. Is it though? Or is it okay? <laughs> it's sad. It's sad? Because I think it's okay. <laughs> You ever seen True Get Grit? No. No. That's the movie that you and your dad liked with Clint Eastwood, right? No, not Clint Eastwood. No. Oh, he's getting frustrated with me now. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Really? Yes. The, the, with... Don't get me don't get me wrong, Clint Eastwood's great, but it was John Wayne that did Oh. Well, he did the original. Okay. Isn't that the movie about the Detroit thing? I don't like you anymore. <laughs> yeah, hi, Liz. <laughs> what was that movie, though? What? The one with Clint Eastwood in Detroit. Dirty Harry? That was that? No. It what? was a recent movie. A recent movie? What do you like what's Oh the... uh, uh Grand Torino. Oh, that's what I thought True Grit was. No. No. That was an okay movie. That was a good movie. John Wayne. John Wayne Bobbitt. You should have seen liar, the kid. Liar, liar is my go-to. That is a good liar, liar is a good one. Liar, liar. Yeah. Oh, is that the seen, yeah. Jim Carrey and yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good. That's a good one. Oh. I've never watched that. I've watched it a couple times, but it's not one of my go-tos. Jason said, "True get <clears throat> And the first thing that came to my mind was John Wayne, westerns. <laughs> well, apparently, you would get along with my husband better than apparently I do. Woof. 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 I think I'm just encouraging him when I do that. Because <laughs> he's so vicious. He is very vicious. He's an awesome guard dog. He's going to protect us from all of the scary noises. Well, I know if a leaf ever attacks <laughs> me, he's on it. So, true story. I was laying in bed. And... Uh, my side of the bed, I lay on my, on my side of the bed, it's against, it's not against the windows, but it's closer to the windows. And I lay on my left side, which has, I face out so I can see out the window. So I'm laying there and I'm watching something on my iPad. I don't even know what it, what it was, but I saw some movement out of the window that looked like it was pretty close to the window and it was way too big to be a bug. 
uh, <laughs> I was just like, it startled me for like a half of a second and it was a leaf. The wind was blowing so hard that it kicked a leaf up off the ground and was swirling it around outside our window for a couple <laughs> seconds. I was like, wow, that was something I have never seen before. The Crafty Panda hates Jim Carrey movie. What? That's Mary. What? Mary, you're killing me. Ace Ventura? That, come on now. She's not a fan. Dumb and Dumber? She's not come a fan. On. She's not a fan. Hey, dumb, Jeff Daniels, too. Oh, my goodness. Jeff Daniels is from Ann Arbor. Oh, is he? Mm -hmm. Okay, that gives you one in your column, man. That, I like Jeff Daniels. Well, Tom Selleck is from Detroit, too. Is he? Mm-hmm. We're going to have to run this list down of of people from Virginia and people from uh, Michigan. I win. I win. No, you don't win. I win. You never win. I win. Because, like, I get, like, a lot of presidents. To, to presidents throw. don't count. They do count. Granted, now most of them popped up when there was only 13 states, so there's only one of 13 that they could come from. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a bit of a win you know like virginia has been around a little longer than, than michigan ian said omg dumb and dumber is so bad well, that's what makes it so good <laughs> no, no not really uh, is that the birthday boy mary b wants to know yes it is and we had strawberry shortcake tonight for dessert, and Zoe didn't like it, so Jason got one and a half slices of cake. I did. That child. She's a very picky eater. But she I tried it. She did. She ate a good bit of it. She just didn't she didn't like it. She tried it. Hey, I can't say nothing. I should have went for the cheesecake. Oh, she would have ate all that. Well, and they, yours. <laughs> they didn't have they didn't have just plain cheesecake. They had the one with the uh, the lemon, the, I think I had the lemon on top. She don't like the lemon. She just likes the cheesecake part. Yeah. So. Mary said, definitely not a fan, Jason. He's more of slapstick, and that's not my kind of comedy, man. Beverly Hills Cop? Yes, but Dumb and Dumber is a dumper. <laughs> wow. People are not agreeing with you on wow. this dumb and dumper they're all like dumb and stupid dumber. no next yeah stupid. even the people that's the <laughs> point <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the whole thing yes it's it's in the title <laughs> well i mean uh, you're not wrong. No, it only made hundreds of millions of dollars, so yeah, I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> Ooh, Mary said she bought some cheesecake crumble cookies today. Should we invite Mary over tomorrow? <laughs> Where's the cookies, Mary? Where's the cookies, Mary? <laughs> Cancel plans, Mary's come out with cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I do actually got to talk to you, Mary. We got to figure out when you're coming. If you're coming Tuesday or you're coming Wednesday morning, let me know. Maybe we'll Zoom again in the morning while Jason's working out. Text me afterwards and we'll work all that out. <clears throat> Two thumbs up on Central Intelligence, Sue said. Elizabeth said dibs. I don't know what she's dibsing, but she's dibsing something. <laughs> dibs. <laughs> Oh, okay. Got you, Sue. Two thumbs up on Central Intelligence. That was a great movie. The Rock has a show out now called Young Rock. Young Rock, I think. Yeah, yeah, I, think yeah. That's I love that show. I watch it. I can't wait for it to come up. Pam says, You two are so funny. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Beetlejuice has had enough of us. He just left the room. <laughs> he said, yeah. <laughs> this is usually the room that he's like, let me in, let me in, let me in. He's like, y'all suck. <laughs> he just walked out. I'm probably going to go pee on my floor. You want to take him out? Uh, not with that wind, not really. Well. We'll see, here's the thing. If I take him out, this is going to be the last time. 
and then you gotta put him in the and kennel. I'm gonna put him in the kennel because I'm not doing it again. I so. think that's fair. It's nine thirty. It's his bedtime. He's probably tired. It might be. I wouldn't be surprised if he was trying to go into his crate. Well, he's doing his crate. His crate's not shut. I know, but well, I know he can go in there, but I, you don't want to pull him out to take him outside. You want to just take him out one last time tonight and then come back. You can go outside and have a conversation with the dog with the microphone, and they can all hear what you're gonna say. Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> Come on, dog. It's usually me and a bunch of expletives. <laughs> oh, the poor puppy. It is cold. It's very it's cold. cold outside tonight. It's, it's not that it's cold. It's windy. Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, windy. Wind tears through you. Well, then leave the mic because the wind, the wind won't be nice in people's ears. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not taking that. Okay. Well, I will be right here. All right. Folding and ironing and cutting and folding. And being wrong about Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Are you going to come back with some crumbled cheesecake cookies? Not crumbled cheesecake cookies, no. <laughs> I didn't know they made such a thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. He will be here Sunday. Jason's going to go get justice on Sunday and have him home for an overnight because Monday's a holiday, which means there might be an overnight sewing session on Sunday night in my future. The morning we woke up to a free this morning, we woke up to a freezer inside our house. Our boiler shut down, Katie says. Renee says, hello, I'm new to quilting and just started to watch your videos. I can't get enough. Thank you. I can't wait to have my own small space to sew. Welcome to the fun. And your checkbook will not thank you for getting into this hobby because it is a little pricey. But we'll laugh and we'll have a lot of fun and it'll be great. Becca, when did you start quilting? Oh gosh, what year was that? I want to say it was like 2015 that I started sewing. And the story goes like this. I had a friend who was sewing and she was trying to teach all of her friends how to sew. And she was asking, she was inviting us over to do sewing and try out things. And I kept telling her no, because I had tried my hand at several arts and crafts and, um, the one that I never tried is sewing I never tried quilting. And I was so intimidated by a sewing machine that I just decided I never thought I want to do it. So no, 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 didn't want to do it. But I eventually took her up on one of her sip and sew events that she was hosting at her home showed up. And that weekend I bought a sewing machine and I was hooked, but I didn't make a quilt. I was making practical things. I was just trying to get used to playing with fabric and thread and getting to know my sewing machine. And the whole time I'm doing that, my mom was saying, you should make a quilt. You should make a quilt. You should make a quilt. And I kept saying, are you nuts? <laughs> no, thank you. And then I tried to make a quilt and I was bit by that bug too. So the moral of that story is when somebody says you should try blank, I try not to say, no, I'm not going to do that until, or I try not to say no, never until I've had a chance to try it and decide whether or not I really like doing it or not. Because I thought sewing was something I would never get into. And I also thought that I would never want to make a quilt and look at me now. I love making quilts. <clears throat> Chocolate caramel cookies at Crumble this week too, Becca. Oh, those are my favorite. Oh, no, Mary. Oh, no. Those are good. Undercover, undercover. I got that stupid song. Green, green grass, blue, blue sky. Okay. Get out. I don't know anyone close to me that quilts. I wish I did. I don't. Well, that's not true. My friend Mary lives about an hour away and she comes over and sews and quilts with me. But there's it's not a hobby that a lot of people shared. He didn't want to go out. He went out. He just didn't do anything. Oh, he was 
when I went out there, I pulled him out of the cage. Oh, he was in his crate. He went to lay down. Yeah, so he just went back to his crate. And He's tired. Shut off the lights and stuff. So he was, was done for the night. He was like, "You guys are boring." <laughs> I love that he he's going to his crate at bedtime on his own. And I also love that we seem to have, I'm sure we still have quite a ways to go, but I also love that we're kind of at this phase where if we're eating dinner at the dinner table or in the front room in front of the TV, like we did tonight, we can put him in his kennel and he doesn't cry and he doesn't whine. He's just like, okay, cool. Let me know when you're done. He seems happy and content in there. It's his safe space. It's where he goes to relax. It took a while to get there, but I am, I'm glad. I think we can now say that he's crate trained. Does that make sense? I guess. I mean, He doesn't go there on command, though. Did he go to doggy daycare today? He's not acting like himself tonight. No, he didn't. But I've been home all day. And this is actually, he's getting more and more like this when there aren't people here. Like when it's just us, right? When there's not visitors, when there's not other puppies here. He's usually pretty chill. Um, he gets bursts of excitement throughout the day. But... Normally, he it, when it gets later in the evening, he's just like, okay, I'm done. Good night. He just gets excited really easy still. It doesn't take much. A leaf blowing across the yard. Zoe coming home from school. Mary pulling up the driveway. <laughs> what is your new red pressing mat, Carla wants to know. This is a wooden pressing board that I bought from a craft store in um out in the Lancaster area several years ago. I think it was the old country store or something like that. And the cover that was on it was really looking pretty poor and needed to be cleaned up. So I gave Mary some fabric that I thought was cute and she did me a salad and recovered it. So I've been using this quite a lot for a little pressing. I like it because it's got feet on the bottom and it's oh wood underneath so it doesn't like the heat doesn't get onto my mat as much as like the other the uh wool pressing pad would i've got two of my four blocks piece jason i am halfway done with my blocks you're halfway there. whoa Living on a prayer. Take my hand. We'll make it, I swear. Whoa. You know what? Do I want that song one? is officially old. So are we. What are you talking about? I know. What Were we watching that show together when... Yeah, we were watching Mythic, Qu Myth Mythic Quest. Is it Mythic Quest? Is that the name of it? The show we were watching last night yeah, yeah. when he was like, over 40 is a protected age category. Yeah. <laughs> and both Jason and I just went. <laughs> I still hate the Golden Girls. <laughs> Tell them your story about the Golden Girls. Well, we loved the Golden I Girls. Like, still look, do. I like the Golden Girls. But when I was younger, it made sense. Like they were like, they were older, they were retired and but or then, we thought they were. They yeah, actually yeah. weren't. But like when you when you listen and you say, oh, she's having her 55th birthday. I'm like, 50, 55th? I'm just like six or seven years away from that. What are you talking, talking about? Like, <laughs> but like, like, well, how did, how did, they shouldn't have been retired and all. And what's the deal? I don't know. Like it just. We were, so we. It seemed age appropriate when I was. I like, to, <laughs> I like to listen to white noise when I go to sleep. And a lot of times I'll pull up either planet uh, documentaries like BBC or National Geographic because I find those to be soothing. Or I'll pull up old sitcoms that I used to watch when I was younger, right? And Golden Girls is one of them. And Jason loved them too. He was like, okay, you know, he loved the Golden Girls as well. And we're laying there one night, we're listening to the Golden Girls and we're just, the show's just on and we're drifting off to sleep. And 
it's quiet and you hear Rose mention something about it's her 55th birthday and it's quiet for a minute. And Jason let out an expletive that started with the word F and went, I don't want to watch that show anymore. <laughs> because it's true. When we were watching it when we were kids, you were like, you thought they were so much older. And 55 is nothing now. <laughs> but apparently when we were kids, 55 was like, it was understandable. It seemed right. right? <laughs> 55 was apparently oh, I get it now. horribly old. You're supposed to be retired at 55. That just... Now it's just like, what? That's, I, what? Like, I just had my 47th. It's it's, I, it's not that far. It's, it's eight years away. Yeah. <laughs> We're single digits away from 55. It's not funny anymore. Ooh. I got to clean my glasses. I got a spot on them. I hate when that happens. I know. I think the puppy licked my glasses earlier. Sad thing is I've been dealing with it all day. <laughs> VR says, Jason, I just turned 50, so it's a hard pill to swallow. Might as well. Something on my 50th birthday party was the Golden Girls. <laughs> I have the Golden Girls videos and have watched them so many times, but I still laugh, and I am 75. I actually... I, I watch them. I, I like the Golden Girls. Wrong. It's nothing. It's the age. That, like, the age is just wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because they're not perpetually getting older. We're just getting closer to their age. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ooh, how it's made. I love how it's made. Mary says, I feel cheated. That sucks. If that's the case, I should have been retired seven years ago. <laughs> I don't think they were retired, though, because Dorothy was a school teacher. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't think they were retired. But they were definitely living lives that I equated to be something that you did at, like, grandma's age. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, <laughs> they were, like, they were, what, they were in Florida, weren't they? Was yeah, they were in Florida. Florida. Like Retirement Central or whatever. I I think your I think what it is is our perspective changed, right? Like well, when we watch it as kids, we're like, oh, it's about a bunch of grandmas that live together. And now we're like, oh, it's just a bunch of ladies that live together and they're roommates. Yeah. <laughs> and they're living life. <laughs> it's a different story. <laughs> and none of them quilted, by the way. Can we just talk about that? <laughs> none of them quilted. Because <laughs> that's the thing. None of them quilted. <laughs> Quilters, how dare they? You're supposed to quilt. <laughs> that is the law. Da, 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 da. <laughs> At a certain age, you're supposed to quilt. That is the law. <laughs> Although I will say, I see Ian's talking about Betty White and her passing. I will say after she passed. I had to stop. Like I, I'm, I'm still in a sad state. A year later, that Betty White has passed. I don't want to watch the show right now because it reminds me that she passed away, and that happens with some movies or TV shows that I loved and that I would find that I find like soothing. I guess if one like if something happens where a cast member passes away or whatever, I don't want to watch it because it makes me sad. So it comes off of my can watch at nighttime. <laughs> or if there is a episode in that season about death or something like that or something sad, that particular season comes off of my list of things that I can watch in the background when I'm just because I don't want to think about the. I get to choose to feed things that make me happy and, and are positive into my brain, or I can feed sad, depressing things. So I'm going to lean towards the happy, positive stuff. How I Met Your Mother, I love that show. But there's one season where Marshall's dad passes away. I won't watch that season. Like, well, I'll watch the season, but when it starts getting close to that episode, I'll skip over it. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want to. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't have to. I couldn't watch Glee for a while. I used to love that show. And then after Corey Monteith passed away, I and then, of course, the, apparently there was a whole bunch of stuff that happened to some of the cast members after the show stopped recording. But I, 
after Cory Monteith passed away, I was just like, I, I can't. This is too sad. I did watch all of the episodes Shut eventually, up, but no, Cory Monteith was, yeah, Finn, yeah, okay, yeah, the football player dude, yeah, Puck. That's who I was with the mohawk. He was he got um arrested or charged with child pornography, and then he took his own life. And then um, Santana, you remember Santana? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She was found at the bottom of a lake or something. Like she had, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it was foul play. I think she just had a swimming accident or something while she was out on a boat with her son who was like four years old. Oh. It's just, it's all sad. I don't want to think about it. So I'm not going to watch the show because it's just going to bring it to my head. I can't watch the movie The Notebook. I haven't seen that movie in a while. Did you ever watch that? I have. Yeah, I watched it once. It, it, that's a cringe one, isn't it? Yeah. You know what else I don't like watching? I don't like watching romance movies where they make it okay to cheat on your significant other. Where they, like, explain it away. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like... I guess. I, I don't like that. I don't like that. If you're unhappy with the person, then leave. But don't. Bye. Hey, you <laughs> sit down. <laughs> did you do, did you all know the actress that played Dorothy's mom was the youngest actress on the show? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was always a cool fact when it came up. Yep. Dukes of Hazard. Did you all? Dukes of Hazard was an amazing show as a child. My quilt project says revisiting it as an adult, the show lost its magic. I could see that. Oh, I love Dukes of Hazard. As a kid, I tried to watch it as an adult. I was like, "This is the stupidest show I have ever seen." I could probably still watch. I have, I, yeah, I, can, I haven't gotten through an episode when I was being older, but when I was a kid, oh, I had. I remember I had uh, Dukes of Hazard on. I had my Dukes of Hazard lunch tray lunch box no well i had that too but i had a tray i had like you fold it out the you legs. fancy i had to fold it out the <laughs> legs and the dukes of hazard tray and i had i would eat my spaghettios with my <laughs> cherry with my cherry kool-aid oh my gosh <laughs> oh that was that was life right there i was living life I'm living something <laughs> living something my dear <laughs> I'll tell you the worst, one of the most disappointing movies. I watched, when I was a kid, I watched the movie Salem's Lot. I don't know that movie, but and okay, keep going. I couldn't get through it. It scared me to death. There was especially this one scene where this, like, this little boy is like net pecking on the window, trying to get his friend to let him in the house. Ooh. And he's like, let me in. Let me. And it's real kind of creepy, right? Uh-huh. And when I was a kid, when I got up around that point, I was like, I'm done. Can't finish this. I'm done. <laughs> and then when I was about 25, I saw the movie. It was that period before they got rid of all VHS, and it was like the VHS DVD kind of. You could find the stores, both of them in the stores. Uh-huh. So I rented the movie, the Salem Lot movie. I got through about the first 15 minutes of it. I was like, this is the most boringest movie I, I, I've ever seen in my life. How did this ever scare me? <laughs> this is a sad, sad movie. I couldn't handle it. I quit. Like, it was just bad. It was just a bad movie. There was one movie that I remember watching as a teenager, The People Under the Stairs. Ooh, Everybody was like, oh, that movie's scary. I watched it. I was like, this ain't scary. It wasn't scary. It's kind of gross. It was gross, it's but it wasn't gross, scary. Kind of gross, yeah. It wasn't scary. But you know what was scary? I love the story you tell me about when you watched Poltergeist. Oh, Poltergeist. Oh, cool. that was great. Oh, that's a good... You want to tell the story? Yeah, tell that story. Tell okay, that story. so my dad had just moved me into the basement, right? And so I'm cool. He hooked me up with the TV, everything, got bed, watching TV down in the basement. And it's like probably the first week so i'm not really used to being down alone in the basement yet but for some reason i'm watching poltergeist and it gets to the scene 
where the clown pulls the kid underneath the bed. And I'm sitting on the edge, and I drop something. I think it's a remote or something, right? I, I think, I don't remember what it was. <laughs> but I drop something, and I look down, and I say, stop being a chicken. Pick it up. <laughs> There's nothing underneath your bed. It's just a movie. I had to psych myself up. Went through this like three or four times. So I reached down, and my cat was underneath the bed, <laughs> and it nipped at my hand. And I've never, like, literally, from a sitting position, jumped from the front of my bed to the back of my bed from a seated <laughs> position. Like, one movement. Boom! <laughs> and as soon as I hit the bed, I saw my cat run out. <laughs> I was... I was so mad and so scared and so relieved <laughs> at the same time. It was... <laughs> It was a, I was I was traumatized by that moment. <laughs> but yes, there there was supposed to be nothing underneath my bed, but yet there was something underneath my bed. <laughs> I'm literally having a hard time breathing over here. <laughs> oh. That was that was a good one. I remember I was terrified. Um I remember I got scared because my dad let me watch like The Exorcist and Poltergeist and stuff when I was way too young, <laughs> way too young. And so that became like a perpetual fear for a while when I was growing up. And I remember going to school and that whole Bloody Mary thing was going around. Oh, that, 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 that. oh my gosh. And so I was scared of the Bloody Mary thing. And I came home and I was having a hard time sleeping because I was scared about Bloody Mary. And my brother was like, I tried Bloody Mary at school in the mirror. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah. I was like, no, Bill, don't do that. And so I go downstairs and I decide dad's going to tell me that everything's okay and Bloody Mary isn't real and I'm going to be able to go to sleep because dad won't lie to me. And so I go downstairs and I'm like, dad, is Bloody Mary real? And my dad looks at me with a straight face and says, yes. <laughs> oh. Yes. I was like, <laughs> man, he wanted to rack up some therapy. <laughs> That's just therapy 101 right there. <laughs> oh, he was like, yes. I was like, what? <laughs> and ensued several discussions for a very long time, which we do not need to get into here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I appreciate the mental distress. <laughs> Ian said the Twilight Zone creeped him out as a kid. I never really watched that. I'll tell you what, The Exorcist scared me. So I still won't watch that movie. I, I It still scares me, but The Exorcist scared me so much. We lived in Arlington for a long time. I would not drive by the Georgetown steps. <laughs> Wouldn't do it. When Justice was at the hospital at Georgetown, though, I had to. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. I know a lot of but trivia. <laughs> no, we're not. VR says, I don't like scary movies into this day. I refuse to watch. I only have to watch one. And that was so my husband would go to church with me. He still goes with me to this day. <laughs> That's an interesting way to get your husband to go to church with you. Hey, let's watch a movie. Hmm. <laughs> we would stay up on Friday nights and watch Nightmare Theater. It was a bunch of just silly old black and white horror movies. Most were just funny, Shelley Clark says. We used to watch, my friend that I grew up with and I used to watch um, the Jason, or not the Jason, the Michael Myers movies. Those were, those were great. And we'd, we'd always get barbecue chips and Mountain Dew to watch them with. And it, was, it was somewhere between like sixth and seventh grade that we did that. You ever watch Elvira? 
uh, it's been so long, but yes, I did see that. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. She'd always host those movies and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a big thing for me and my mom. We'd watch the Elvira hosting her shows and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know why you watched Elvira. Oh, yeah. She was special. She was special. <laughs> special. She was gifted. Gifted. These are all terms that don't mean what I think you mean. <laughs> Scary movies and The Walking Dead. I don't like jump scare movies either. Julie says I don't like, or uh, my quilt project says I don't like jump scare movies. What is one movie, Jason, that you watched as a kid or TV show that you were like, that was the best movie ever. And then you rewatch it as an adult. You were like, what was I thinking? Do you have any like that? Uh, good movie when I was a kid. Bad movie when I got older. Yeah. I can't think of any offhand. I can't, not none that like like I said. They got from the ones that I thought were scary. I got same as I thought. I thought was scary, but none that I thought this was a great movie. And then all of a sudden it sucked. <laughs> That might come to me later. Okay. I don't have any of those. Rachel says, I am a total chicken. My biggest problem is that I cover my eyes <laughs> sometimes too fast. I have actually smacked myself in the face. Do you want to tell them about the haunted house that we took justice to in Gatlinburg? Oh, you missed one. <laughs> you used my son's autism to get to shut the place down so you could, we could just walk through it because you were scared. You mean that haunted house? <laughs> Tell that story. I think I just did. It's pretty <laughs> self-explanatory. Because Justice had not one problem with going into that haunted house. You, you, you stopped. We got into that one waiting room where the, where the, uh, I think it was the fire. I told you I don't open. like haunted houses. It was your idea to go in. No, it was your my idea for you and Justice to go in, not for me. Oh well, <laughs> you should have kept your butt out of it. <laughs> But yeah, that fireplace creaked open, and you're like, we need to shut this down. My son, my stepson's uh, is autistic, and he's had, you were all, you were all not how it went. throwing justice underneath the bus. No, I was going to go, I was manning up, and they asked something about justice, because I think, I don't, they asked something about justice, and I was like, oh, he's autistic. He'll be fine. No, he's okay. And they're like, okay, because if we need to, we'll turn the lights on for him and let him go through by himself. And there was nobody else around and that fireplace opened. And I was like, yeah, can we have the lights on? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it might yeah, be better okay. for justice. I'll give you, yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. They offered it first. They yeah, did offer it. Up on it quick when, uh, as soon as that fireplace opened, I went, open. we're going to need to open it. <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll wait for the we'll wait for everybody else to finish. We'll be over here. I took him to another haunted thing. Uh, I don't. I, you weren't with us. You, I think it's when like you took Katana and did something, and I had Justice and went and did something. We just kind of uh -huh. split up. Uh huh. But there was like a haunted. Um, it wasn't a haunted. Oh, it was uh, the it was a haunted theater. Thing, yeah, like it was the it was the Ripley's. Yeah, the yeah, Ripley's haunted like theater. That. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we sat in there. And Justice just, loves Halloween yeah, just, and spooky he stuff. Just, he just sat in there. And he he took that like a champ. He just watched the things popping up on the left, right, and things coming out. It was cool. It was all right. He was fine with it. We left that. Uh -oh. I did not have my ruler lined up the right way, so we're just going to fix that with a little seamy seam seam. That was not appropriate. Here, I thought you were a professional. Uh -huh. Not a professional. Professional hack, maybe. <laughs> Never tell. I always hated that term, hack. Hack? Yeah, hack. So when it's so, that, it happens a lot of people, he's a hack. Well, like, cause, but it, I'm always like, well, how do you prove that? Like, what do you, because, I mean, it seems weird. Like, how? what What? What defines somebody as being a hack? I don't know. Because like, you, you can't know everything about everything. No. Nope. So you have to be 
some there's got to be even even things you you do all the time that there's going to be pieces of it that you don't do all the time. That's right. You're going to be you're going to not be good at it. You're just going to be trying it. Mm-hmm. So just see, I hate I always hated that term hack. Okay, fair enough. That's just me though. I don't know. You're entitled to that opinion. Thank you for validating my feelings, Becca. You're welcome. I feel heard. You've been heard. Drive through. <laughs> Push on. <laughs> you have been heard. Thank you for coming. Eagle Eye says, Exorcist was the one that made me look over my shoulder. That was a bad movie. I cannot watch that one. Mary says, oh, but Jason, there are some people who think they know everything about everything. So that's my definition of a hack. (laughs) (laughs) Well... I don't think I don't think anybody knows everything about everything, even if they might want to make you think that they do. I think there's always ways that all of us can learn, grow, and improve. Period. End of story. That's the. That, that I mean, I subscribe to that theory. I believe that. But it also does become frustrating. I don't deal with that at my current job, but I remember the last job I had when performance review would come around and they'd be like, you knocked it out of the park. You, you gave 150%. You got meets expectations. And you're like, but I thought I knocked it out of the park and I gave 150%. And they'd be like, yes, and I expected you to do that. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> what? 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 Can we? Can we talk about your definition of what you expect? Because I think I'm gonna dial it back now. <laughs> I expected you to give 150 percent. Okay. Well, I expect to be quitting real soon. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just their way of being like, ah, eh, we don't want to give you a raise. <laughs> we want more work, less cost. Undercover, undercover, undercover. Green, green grass, blue, blue sky. Oh my gosh, it's still stuck on my head. <laughs> Earworm. Oh, yeah. No idea what you're talking oh, about. It's a stupid dance that they do in shorts. And it's probably like one content creator that I have seen over and over do the dance. I've started to see like some smaller YouTubers or so whatever start to do it too. And I'm just like, okay, this is a thing now. It's a, it's a dance. Got it. It worked because here I am like literally playing the song in my head over and over and I can visual I've seen the shorts multiple times and I may have even seeked them out because the song became so catchy. Is it the TikTok thing? It's an Instagram, YouTube. I don't oh. do TikTok. So oh. um, most of the shorts that I see are in Instagram or YouTube. But I don't, I know other content creators do this too. When I create a short, I cross post it. So I'll put it on Instagram and then I'll put it on YouTube. So it's really all the same stuff, just on a different platform. I'm going to quote Khan. Gonna be fun. I get a whole bed to myself. You're welcome. <laughs> Flat oh. Jenny. Flat Jenny's gonna go to Quilt Con with me. Jason said I gotta walk her around the aisles. Be like, how much does this cost? 
<laughs> I'm hoping Jenny Doan will show up so I can just be like, Jenna! <laughs> she might run in the opposite direction. Oh, I she looks at you. You're not funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to brag or nothing, but my videos are enjoyed by well over four people worldwide. <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but my four subscribers say I am funny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Giggle. What classes are you taking at QuiltCon? That is like the third time that question has come up. So let's just answer. Don't have a good answer. I, well, it's because it's on a schedule that's in my... <sighs> docs.google.com I have it all saved and let's just clear this up because here is my schedule oh I could go into the QuiltCon app what am I doing I can go into the QuiltCon app Arr! the classes that I am taking at QuiltCon are as follows I'm waiting for it to load my schedule so on Thursday I am taking what's in a name tag from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then on Friday, from 1.30 to 4.30, I am taking Find Yourself, Stitch Sampler Embroidery. It's a beginner embroidery class. They give you a tote bag that has a word search on it, and you use embroidery to circle words that stand out to you. On Friday evening, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., I am taking Improv Piecing, and I am really excited about that one. And then on... Saturday from 1 30 to 4 30 I'm taking intro to pre-quilt and then Sunday from 9 a.m to 12 p.m and I don't know if I'll be there for the whole thing I am taking one that says from page to project Mary and I have decided that we're going to head back on Sunday because I think I'm going to be done and I think she's going to be done so I might head out of that one a little earlier than I normally would definitely want to be on the road by 12 o'clock I'm hoping to be on the road by like 10 to be honest I want to be home. And then there are several lectures that I have my eye on that I would like to go and listen to. I think Mary's going to do mostly lectures and shopping and looking at the quilts. I'm going to do four or five workshops, a few lectures, shopping and looking at quilts. Shelly is waiting for QuiltCon to return to the West. Wow, when did I clean that one up? That's great. I'm making block number three. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Another uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. I have made two of these, and now I want to make the other two. I can't put those together because they're mirror images. So we're going to do this one. It's 10 o'clock. I think it's, I think I will finish this over the weekend. Because it's going to take me about another half an hour to do all this. And it's not going to happen on the live because I like to end the lives at, you know, 10 o'clock. But I do have an audio that Ian sent me. So when I'm back here sewing, Ian does a really good job of texting me things that happen in the chat that so I don't miss it if somebody had a question for me. And I love that he does this. But he also likes to interject humor throughout the evening. And so this one will have been from a while ago because I didn't he sent it a while ago. He'll he'll send me like uh, graphics, images or audio messages. So he sent me an audio message. Let's see what it says. Hi, I'm Flat Ginny. Oh, we're halfway there. Do you, do you remember? Do you remember when I did that? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! What happened? <laughs> is that song stuck in your head? What is that? <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> Ian cracks me up. 
Uh, Louise says, Becca, have a wonderful time at QuiltCon. My quilt project says, I feel like Rodney Dangerfield. I got no respect. Uh, Pat Boo says, hey, Ian, thanks for letting me know what Becca is making, but I don't see a red ironing board. This is the red ironing board. This is the project that I was working on that, that's under my finger. Um, I've got two, and two of those blocks finished and two halves of the other two done. So this is probably something I'll have pieced over the weekend. Uh, let's see. I'll be back in a few minutes. Becca, Trey Joyner says... Beck, I am sure you'll have a great time at QuiltCon. Uh, my quilt projects. Yes, and a 3% yearly increase is not really an increase with our inflated economy. I have been at my job for 20 plus years. The average age of my coworkers is less than 30 and some are bosses at 25. Oof. Kathy Moore says, I wanted to go to the International Quilt Show here in Houston, but family was sick and I couldn't make it. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, TV shows... Oh, she's talking about what I was talking about earlier. Uh, ba 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 Trey Joyner, you're humorous, Becca. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> uh, uh, he's not that funny. Well, funny looking, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I see you over there last week. Uh, Becca, move on to It's a Small World After All. To get oh, my gosh. Yeah, that did it. It's a small world after all. It, you know, I had a watch that sang that. It had Mickey Mouse on it. And every time you pressed, like, the little crown on it, it would sing that song to me. Uh, okay, what do you mean? What you making, Becca? I told you that. Quiet qu quiet quitting. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I don't know why we're... Okay, I'm going too far back to really be any part of the conversation at this point. <laughs> would it be a good monthly box? What would you, what would be a good monthly box that you would, ex you would suggest for a starter from Renee? So there are several subscription boxes out there. And my best advice for you is to think about a couple of things. Number one, how much is your budget? And number two, what do you want out of your box? And expect that not every box that you get is going to be knock it out of the park amazing for you every single month no matter what box you get you're going to get months where you're like eh or i hate it just keep that in mind you don't have full control of the items that are in the box it's a surprise that's the whole idea as long as you go into that with eyes wide open on how much you're going to spend, you're managing your expectations and you realize that sometimes you're gonna be disappointed you'll have a good experience overall. The Open Gates quilt box, uh, I do take it one more, I'll take it one more step. The one more step that I look at is boxes change. They all offer different things. I like to lean more towards the boxes that give me a project or a kit that I can work on. And what's nice about the Open Gates box is you get two kits a small 10 minute sew and a slightly larger project that you can do in an afternoon or a weekend as you see me do here. And they're all kitted. You have everything that you need. So you don't need to pull anything else from your stash. You just go grab it and you, you grab your box and you sit down at your sewing machine and you just get to work. Um, that's why I like these boxes. But they also have boxes that give you less fabric, more notions. The sew sampler is very economical but you don't get a full kit. You get the designer fabric and you have to bring your blenders or your solids and you get some new to market notions, things like that. There's a lot out there. I don't want to sit here and go through every single one. And I will tell you the hardest question for me to answer is which one would I recommend for you? Because your needs, your budget, your desires, and your tastes may be different than mine. Instead, think about what you want out of a box, how much money you're willing to spend, and then go to YouTube because every box is opened by a plethora of channels and you can easily see what are in each of those boxes. Research it. Look at the past couple of months and if it was something that you like, sign up. If you get two or three boxes in a row that you're just not feeling it, Feel free to pull the plug on it and put the money somewhere else. None of these boxes require you to stay committed to it forever. Stay with it. And if it's not hitting your hitting what you like, then go somewhere else. 
Where is Open Gates? Uh, I don't, I think they're in Utah. I want to say like Salt Lake, like Utah area. But um, Monique, if she's still in the chat, can answer that for you. Uh, da -da -da -da, have fun at QuiltCon. I think Soft Airs with Lynn did a review comparison of lots of boxes. There you go. You can check that out. Welcome back, Trey. Uh, Pat Boo says, Becca, a 10 minute sew. I couldn't do anything in 10 minutes. Well, the first project that I had for, where did it go? I don't know where I said it, babe. The first, pro here it is. The small project that I got, I did this in like 10 or 15 minutes. It was just a lanyard. It was an easy sew, but maybe half an hour. I don't know. Really easy sew. Really easy to put together. I'm doing the wool box and the cotton box from Primitive Gatherings this year. Awesome. All right. Okay. All right. I think that's, uh, oh, you can get quilts at the door. Uh, yes. Quilt con. You can get quilts. You can get tickets at the door, not quilts at the door. You get, Hey, do you have the microphone? Oh, yeah. Jason was leaving the room with the microphone. <laughs> Thank Sorry. you, babe. Thank you. All right. He's heading out the room. He's probably going to bed. So I think I'm going to follow him because I'm ready to go to bed too. So you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here because I'm ending the live stream. Donna with handmade by Ying is probably live right about now. Um, I'm going to go say goodnight to Jason and I'll see if the bug still hits me to stay down here. And so otherwise I think I'm going to bed. Things to remember Sunday. If you are part of the Sobeka VIP, there is a zoom from 2 PM to 6 PM. We are working on month number two for the among the stars again, block of the month. And don't forget to sign up for that. So yeah, class that I'm teaching. It is a free class for you. We're going to make a, a braid table runner. It's going to be a lot of fun. No live next week, but there will be a vlog on Thursday and there will be lots of shorts and little bits of content that I'll be trinkling onto the channel and Instagram to give you an inside look of what quilt con, what my quilt con experience is like. I'll see you guys all in a couple of weeks or sooner on the vlog. Bye.